Inquisitor is broken this patch. I listened. I forgot how many people like to play Eye of Winter, especially as a spell slinger, so this is what we're starting with. So all the builds I'm presenting will be League Star viable, mostly for softcore trade. All of my builds aim to be endgame viable at my League start setup. This build aside. So Spellslinger isn't actually that strong for pushing initial endgame. It feels really good, but it doesn't quite have the damage for some of the harder fights like the Feared. That said, given the defenses and recovery Inquisitor now has, even 1-2 to two million damage should be sufficient to clear most of the endgame, including the early 4 ways like the Twisted and the Formed, and whatever the Synthesis one is, I always forget it. So for this build, there's basically two core uniques. The first is a Snake Pit Ring, and without this, you can't really get the big massive shotgunning effect of Eye Winter and Hydrosphere. So Hydrosphere wasn't nerfed again, I don't know why, but since it's still in the game, we're gonna abuse it. The second core unique is a Glorious Vandy with Doriani on it. And what this does is two things. Firstly, it gives you a gigantic ES pool based on your life, and on Quizzer this is really great. And secondly, this lets you take damage simultaneously from your life and ES pool. And this specific interaction is what enables Righteous Fire on Inquisitor. The thing with Inquisitor is that you get Pious Path, and Pious Path lets life regen apply to ES regen as well. This also got buffed, this patch, because it has 50% increased effect of Consecrated Ground you create, so you actually get 3% more regen, I believe. Beyond this, any source of life regen you get on Inquisitor are effectively doubled, because it also applies to your energy shield pool. Now, if you can take damage from both these pools at the same time, it's actually completely effective HP. So I'm actually putting this jewel up here, up top, because I don't want to mess around with any of these nodes. The life regen and mana regen nodes are actually really valuable, and now melding has gotten a huge buff, and you cannot skip this. So the build has a 10k hybrid pull with day 1 gear, somewhere around 1 to 2 million DPS depending on how you see shotguns, and you do have to recalculate the skill cooldown because I'm running a spell singer enchant. We're rocking about 15,000 armor and a molten shell setup, so with normal mobs you're reducing something like 70% of damage, with big hits you're still reducing somewhere in the range of 20 to 30% of his damage. The thing is on Inquisitor, reduction isn't as important because you have such incredible sustain. Having good recovery on a build means that the max hit taken is a much more important defensive stat for you to worry about. So this is the tree. It looks really similar to what it did last league, but what's really important is that you do not skip the big hybrid nodes. This includes the Purity of Flesh cluster, the Written in Blood cluster, and the Melding cluster. All of these get way more life and ES together, and what this means is that on Quizzer you get a much, much, much bigger hybrid pool this patch. We're also pathing down to Combat Stamina. Combat Stamina gives you some much needed regen and gives you life, and gives you pathing over towards a Scion Life Wheel which has been nerfed, but now it has Iron Will. And Iron Will is actually giving us somewhere in the range of 11-ish percent DPS, depending on what your gear setup is. This node is really great on Inquisitor, and I think it's a must include for all Inquisitor spell builds. We're also taking a bunch of life on tree and two reservation clusters. Other than that, I'm looking to take crit and spell crit wherever I go. It is a fairly simple tree, but the masteries are what makes it really good now. Down here on the armor node for combat stamina, I get to run determination reservation efficiency, and this lets me actually run determination in my core aura setup, really helping with fizz mitigation. Up here, I'm taking regen while moving. You should always pretty much be moving, right? Sovereignty has been buffed. Reservation in general has been buffed for spell slinger and for low reservation investment builds. And this reservation mastery node is even better. Up here, I'm taking the crit multi, and then I'm taking vitality reservation efficiency. So now on this patch with minimal investment, I can put in two full spell singer setups, Vitality and Determination. Now you can swap out Determination for Hell of the Vice if you like those explosions, but I don't really think it's necessary. As far as the Ascendancy nodes go, yes, I'm taking Pious Path, and I'm also pathing all the way to Inevitable Judgment. Now there is a lot of source of elemental penetration or resistance reduction or exposure on the tree, but I still prefer going Inevitable Judgment, when possible, on non-fire builds. Now fire builds also get Combustion or Scorch, which makes this node have much less value, but we're cold. Because we're taking Inevitable Judgment, I'm actually using an Essence of Wrath on this Imbued Wand. And I'm going to be using a Deafening Essence of Wrath again because of the built-in Battle Mage or Spell Slinger. You can also use a Deafening Essence of Hatred or Anger, all of them will be good. I think Wrath is kind of nice because you do get a little bit of shock. I personally really enjoy having the trigger as my craft. All of the other rares on here don't really do anything, except for the Body Armor, which has the Gravisius craft of Gain Extra Life as ES. Again, on Quizzer, this is a huge value mod. It gives me something like 1k extra ES just to have this on my armor. Mutant and Tactician are just great early uniques. I would rather be using good rares, or even average rares probably, but I know people like uniques. But these are pretty solid for damage, and the Tactician is great for flash generation and just general quality of life. The flash setup is kind of important. I would really opt for going for whatever defensive flashes fit your build this league. So in this case, I want to run a Granite Flask for the armor, a Quartz Flask because I really value phasing in general, and then I'm using a Diamond Quicksilver. The Enduring Mana Flask is probably necessary. If you do get more mana reduction, 
you might be able to drop this with like a replica conqueror's efficiency, but a mana flask just solves it early, so I don't see why you wouldn't use it. The three jewels are just life and multi, nothing special. So there's an Eye of Winter set up here with whatever damage links you have, and a Hydra Sphere set up with Onslaught. Now within my wand, I'm choosing to trigger Sniper's Mark, a Stone Golem, and Sigil of Power. So the Sniper's Mark is obvious, but the Stone Golem actually gets a crazy amount of value. In fact, this is giving me over 200 net regen, which is really great on Inquisitor, and becomes even more important when we get down to here, because I'm running permanent Righteous Fire this entire time. You can see when I take off Righteous Fire, I have something like 3.3k regen. Inquisitor is insane because of how much regen you get now with Pious Path, Consecrated Ground buffs, regen buffs, and tree buffs. Obviously, you can pop Volar off on bosses. And then I have a Frenzy with Culling Strike and Power Charge on crit. For a lot of Spellsinger builds, Frenzy isn't a great Power Charge on crit applicator. But for Inquisitor specifically, you get a lot of generic crit because of the Ascendancy, which gives you crit per strength or int. My helmet has a defensive setup, but it also includes my Vitality and Determination, which again, I can run because of changes to the tree and mastery. I have a Cast when Damage Taken Molten Shell setup, and this is just level 1. You have enough armor to get a pretty big threshold. I like having a low level 1 here so that it's always triggering. And lastly, I'm running a Vortex on left click with Bone Chill and Arcane Surge, and then a Flame Dash as my only movement skill. You can softcore this up quite easily. You just click this, Pain Attunement, you run Petrified Blood in your links, and you move some of your auras to life. You can also take this node, which gives you increased life reservation efficiency to help out with that life reservation once you're running an Arrogant setup with Petrified Blood. Personally, I don't really like running Petrified Blood on this specific setup. It does give you more damage, but I don't think that damage is make or break, and I'd much rather be tankier, especially as you're doing early things. And Petrified Blood makes things like Lab and Seer a much more painful experience. Now, leveling this build is really simple, but I really wouldn't recommend going for Eye of Winter until you get Snake Pit, just because your single target will be lacking. So I would tend to go with an Orb of Storms, Stormblast Mine, and Frost Bomb setup for leveling, just like normal racers do, all the way until probably level 28, at which point I'd be going for Armageddon Brand. Now, one of the things you can do is you can actually start spellsing Armageddon Brand quite early. I did a practice run where I was using Armageddon Brand and Firestorm as my other skill that I was slinging, and then you manually cast Wave of Conviction. You can pretty much do this the moment you get to Sovereignty, and because of the placement of Runebinder now and Runesmith, it's much easier to do this early on. Elemental Overload is definitely a great note to get early, especially because I would recommend going for both Sanctuary and Pious Path as pathing before you go for Righteous Providence. You'll probably get Righteous Providence around the time you go for Merc Lab. After this, I path down here and just go for Life. You shouldn't need too much damage while you're leveling, especially with the damage buffs to on-hit base Armageddon Brand, which is what I would recommend you be scaling all the way until you get that Snake Pit. If you do need more damage, you can path over here and go for this node, Elemental Focus. And you can also go for this topside pathing to get Snowforge early on, especially because you're igniting the whole time with your double spell singer setup, and one of them should be running Combustion. You get a lot of benefit from this minus res. And keep in mind, Inevitable Judgment is your Uber Lab, so you don't take this till really late anyway. And this tree is in a really good place to do a crit transition, with two crit nodes being one node away, over here and over here, and two crit nodes being zero nodes away, being over here and down here. I would personally go for the crit transition as you finish up Merc Lab, because this is when you're getting Righteous Providence. If you do want to play Eye of Winter early, I imagine that you can, but you are losing a lot of single target damage. There really isn't a good fix for that. The reason why this build is strong, fundamentally, is because of the really broken interaction between Hydrosphere, Snake Pit, and Eye of Winter. Let me know what you guys want to see next. I personally want to drop one of the endgame pushers. I know Volatile Dead, Detonate Dead, Spellsinger is pretty popular, but I don't think it's actually a good pusher early. It does scale really well into the Uber content. I got things in my mind like the Cold March Trapper, the Poison Seismic Champion, or the Spectral Oni Helix Berserker. And I think those three builds in particular are going to be all content viable pretty early on with minimal investment.